Hello and welcome everyone to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Christopher Shepard. Thank you guys for tuning in. Today we kind of have a show that I'd like to call the calm before the storm. We have a lot of finals uh, action coming up in the next couple of days at the Celtics and Mavericks face off in the NBA finals and the Oilers and Panthers face off in the Stanley Cup finals. So today is going to kind of be a weird show but I do have a lot of fantastic and interesting segments for you guys today. Starting off today's show, we talk a lot about the winners of these finals, but we never talk about the losers, so I just want to review and recap their seasons and how they got to where they were in the conference finals. We also look at another interesting segment where I break down the top 10 greatest fantasy basketball and hockey players of all time. And stick around to the end of the show when soccer, even more soccer, as we get closer to both of these tournaments coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'll be going over the golden boot odds, who will win in both the Euros and the Copa America, so stick around for those segments. But before we begin today's show, I always ask that you leave a like, follow us, subscribe to our channel. Also, we do receive a lot of tips and donations, so oh, a little bit of a preview there for our next segments. So if you do feel so inclined, do please leave a tip or donation at the link gsmc.cloud. It is a huge support to both me, the network, and the fellow podcasters of mine. Also, if you do have a question or comment or concern, whatever you like, do please consider leaving it there so I can answer it at the beginning of the next episode. So, without further ado, let's get right into this kind of weird and wacky and fun show coming up ahead. We start off, like I said, we always talk about the Celtics and Mavericks and the Panthers and Oilers as we lead up to the Stanley Cup and NBA Finals. But I just want to dwell on the conference finalists who lost, who got to this point and ultimately came up short. We will start off in the NBA and then switch to the NHL. But before I begin this segment, I just want to say that in terms of both sets of teams in these different sports, I think... The NBA teams are drastically different from the NHL teams. Both the Rangers and the Stars had been there before. They were conference finalists or finalists in the past couple of years. However, the Timberwolves and Pacers were an unfamiliar territory. This is the first time most of their young stars had been in this situation. So I just want to highlight them because of the fact they were able to reach an unexpected height this season. So I'll start off with the Minnesota Timberwolves, obviously a fantastically structured team built around their young star in Anthony Edwards. Um, they have their defensive stalwarts in both Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert. Carl Anthony Towns also fantastic in terms of offensive output, in terms of fantasy. And they just had spectacular role players throughout, whether it be the regular season or postseason, who also stepped up to get them to that conference finals. Ultimately, they came up short. They ran out of gas against a much more experienced Mavs squad. So I just want to give my congratulations to a team in the Minnesota Timberwolves who I think have a bright future. Obviously, there are a lot of questions surrounding this team. Will they be able to retain most, if not all, of their stars? I know there's a situation with Carl Anthony Towns where he's looking to get a contract extension, but for now, I just want to highlight their fantastic season they had this year, both in real life and in fantasy. So we'll start off with Anthony Edwards. This year, he averaged 46 DraftKings fantasy points per game. Fantastic for a young star who's up and coming in this league, but I just think the pressure surrounding him got to his head a little bit. We saw it in the conference finals where he kind of got tired as games progressed defending both Luka and Kyrie. So we're going to have to see more improvement in order for the Timberwolves to maintain their level of success if they hope to progress to the NBA finals in the future. Talking about a guy in Carl Anthony Towns who may not stick around, we will have to see there. But he also averaged around that 40, mid-40s range with 40 DraftKings fantasy points. And then Gobert, a huge defensive presence for them. Obviously one of the best defensive players in the entire NBA, whether you like him or not. With 36 DraftKings fantasy points. And I just wanted to highlight probably one of their best bench slash role players in the squad, and Nas Reed was huge for them in the postseason, especially in terms of that defensive output with both 
crucial steals and crucial blocks. He averaged 26 DraftKings fantasy points per game. So overall, I think the Timberwolves are going to be an exciting team for the next five years, not only due to the players on the court, but off the court situations as they try to balance the books. They are kind of sitting on that threshold of the luxury tax right now. So Everything will have to play out to their advantage in order for them to retain the level of talent we know they have. But ultimately, kudos to them for even getting to this point. They were a very tough, wild, wacky Western Conference. One of the youngest teams in that entire little crapshoot of a Western Conference tournament there. So... I think that this squad deserves their flowers, deserves their due respect because of the fact that this was the first time they were able to progress this far. But moving on over to the Eastern Conference, Conference Finals runner-up, the Indiana Pacers, another young team that's also up and coming, supplemented with these role players who I really liked. Obviously, they gave the Celtics a, a fight in all the four games they played, but ultimately, their problem was not being able to maintain the leads and put pressure on the Celtics by stealing a game or two from them. But overall, I am really thrilled that a Eastern Conference team, rather than the Bucks or the Heat, got to the Conference Finals to face this juggernaut that is the Celtics. So just going over their players in their squad who had fantastic fantasy seasons with Tyrese Halliburton, obviously the face of this team. He is the kind of fulcrum of how they plan their entire mindset. So overall, he had a fantastic year. 46 DraftKings fantasy points average per game this season. Then you have a guy in Miles Turner who's been there for a very long time for the Indiana Pacers who also, because of the fact that this team is now so offensively structured under Rick Carlisle and they're beginning to play a more modern style, his production goes up as it hasn't in previous years. He averaged 33 DraftKings fantasy points. He has just been a huge factor for them. And another guy I kind of want to highlight who kind of stepped it up more in the postseason, but is still a fantastic player in my mind, Andrew Nembhard. Only averaged 22 fantasy points per game in the regular season, but in the playoffs, he, uh, I think he averaged a lot more than that because of the fact that they relied upon him a lot more. So congratulations to both the Timberwolves and the Pacers for being these kind of two unexpected teams that overachieved this season. I'm really excited to see what the future holds for both of them. But let's look at two kind of conference stalwarts in the NHL now, in both the Rangers and the Stars, who have been here before in terms of hockey. I just think that these two teams kind of are very similar, but the fact that they are just well-structured may have hurt them actually in my opinion because they were facing teams with the, where with the Rangers the Florida Panthers just got so much production out of all their lines and they didn't and with the Stars they just ran into this trio of superstars who were so so hot coming into this series and they just couldn't keep up with them but overall two fantastic teams who I do hope will break through to the Stanley Cup final in the future let's start with the New York Rangers obviously a squad that is trying to look around a more team-based identity but still needed their stars to step up and they ultimately fell short Starting off with all their fantasy leaders, Artemi Panarin, 482.8 fantasy points this season. So obviously he has the output, but in the playoffs he kind of fell flat. I've talked about him in previous episodes, wanting to see him step up and be kind of a leader for this uh, Rangers squad. But I think he kind of did not live up to the hype and the expectation there. So... That is one major disappointment. Another one is Vincent Trocek. He, he had a little bit better uh, postseason than Panarin, but still not to uh, the lofty heights the Rangers expect of their stars. 352.4 fantasy points this season, however, so it just goes to show if these are guys who can produce in the regular season, but in the postseason, maybe not as much. Chris Kreider as well, 351.5 fantasy points. He also had a fantastic postseason, mainly in their conference semifinals against the Canes. So we can see that these players really want this, but overall I just feel like in the 
st in the stage that they were at, they did not reach the hype that their fans and their coach expect of them. Moving on to the Dallas Stars. This is just a team that came up against, like I said, Juggernaut and the Edmonton Oilers, who f fantastically progressed and ultimately became this team that no one wanted to face, much less the Stars. Obviously, the Stars seem to be the team best equipped to uh, handle the Oilers of the postseason, but they ultimately fell short because of the Oilers' offensive and defensive prowess. But just looking at how well balanced this squad is, you have a lot of youth and experience in terms of how they ranked in fantasy this year. Starting off with Jason Robertson, their fantastic young center, exciting player, 358.8 fantasy points this season. And then a guy in Joe Pavelski, who's been doing it for years, whether it was with San Jose and now with Dallas, being one of those older leaders on this Dallas team, kind of mixing in youth and experience. 315.5 fantasy points for Mr. Joe Pavelski. And Wyatt Johnston, another young player who kind of stepped up in the postseason with 311.5 fantasy points in the regular season. I'm truly excited to see how he develops for a Dallas squad trying to break through. And then last but not least, kind of a sadder story because of the fact that maybe had he been healthy the entire Oilers series, the Dallas Stars would be the... Uh, Stanley Cup finalist representative from the Western Conference, and I will be talking about the Edmonton Oilers for this segment. So Rupe Hintz, obviously, his presence was hugely missed. We saw when he did come back for that one game, he really helped the squad, really helped Jason Robertson, his, one of his fellow line partners. He had 307 fantasy points this season. So it could have been a different story for a team like Dallas and a team like the Rangers. Also in the NBA, I just think that experience one on the day there but it was such a fun thing to talk about with you guys those are just about do it for it coming up next we are going to do something very special on the show i'm going to rank the top 10 greatest fantasy basketball and hockey players kind of a celebratory segment as these two finals are going to happen sooner so it should be really fun to get into i can't wait we will be right back with those segments